most part, but I'm going to ask it if you guys have anything to add to it. Uh, and then we'll kind of go into Q&A. So why is it important for individuals to become mentors? Yes, I, uh, <laughs> I think part of what makes this group special, again, um, is that we come from uh, backgrounds where a lot of times we're doing the first thing that our family has done or, or whatever. And um, a lot of times we end up um, making a lot of mistakes that take more time, that discourage us, that make us go different avenues or not reach our, the potential that we may have had. And um, it may be more difficult to do the same thing that someone else who had more privilege uh, can do quicker. Um, it, it may be more difficult, but it's possible. And it is more possible, easier, more pleasurable if you have a mentor who can help you do it. And um, not saying that you can't do it alone, but um, more people will succeed, especially in these um, peop in, in people of color who come from backgrounds where there's not a lot of doctors, for instance, in, in my case. Um, I'm the first doctor in my family. Uh, I'm the first doctor who of any friends that I knew growing up. Um, and so, uh, you know, who was I going to, I didn't have any mentors like that growing up. Um, and so for me to now be able to reach down into those same communities and be the doctor that can mentor people to do things that they may not have thought of before um, it is going to allow people uh, the opportunity to you know, pull their family into different opportunities. I think for me, I, I, I practice medicine um, to, to help people be healthy, but it's, it's really at the end of the day to help people be happy so that they can pursue their interests and challenge themselves and so that they can pull themselves out of poverty in this system. You know, I think um, at the end of the day, um, that's how we're going to do it. We're not going to rely on the government. We're not going to rely on, we're going to have to help each other. Um, so. I, that is very well said. Absolutely. I, I totally agree with that. And I think um, there's a saying, right? It takes the village to raise a child. And I think that can, that analogy can mimic what we're, we're saying. It really takes a village to build successful individuals. And through that is all the mentorship. And, um, you know, going through the program, like, like I said, in high school, I really didn't believe in myself that my teacher did. And with that, it really helped me. And, and my parents, I mean, bless their heart, they worked so hard and they really weren't around just because they had to make money to make ends. And I think they didn't even know what the concept of school is. Like they tell me to go do school work, but honestly, they didn't even know what that is or how to help me or, um, you know, and I'm, I'm the first pharmacist in my family. Um, my brother, who's older than me, he actually went back and do pharmacy. So that's really like awesome feeling to say, wow, I inspired my brother to help and pursue on to pharmacy. But just, you know, really the first pharmacist in my network or circles, and then slowly branching out and really reaching out and helping and understanding that um, what what does a pharmacist do? Like I don't think my parents know what I do as pharmacist. Like they they don't really know that. Like what do like okay you work in the hospital. What do that you know? So like I work with doctors and nurses to help make sure that our patients getting the medication they're supposed to get and prevent any adverse outcomes. And they think that I have I own all these drugs. So you know like oh you get free drugs. I'm like nope nope don't want to go there. That's not what I you know. So joke, all jokes aside, but it's really being able to be there and like professionally develop and helping those and really be able to see who have kind of like similar background, but also in the same struggle that I was, or in individuals that may not see things in themselves that I can see. And I was like, hey, I was there. And let me tell you, you can do this. And it's, you know, it's hard, it's not easy, but it's achievable. And you just have to trust yourself and you just got to pull yourself out of this and, and help each other, right? So I think that's why it's so important um, to get a mentor, but when you have the ability to basically pay back or pay it forward, uh, do so because there's so many others out there looking up to you. Now they're like, oh, what does it take to be a pharmacist? Like, what is that you know, school looks like? And um, what's that process look like? I mean, a lot of things may have changed, but the 
foundational in terms of going through that process is very similar. And I think being able to be there and be present and giving people hope and inspire them and empower them to say, hey, take this action because it's doable and really give them say, I did it. And, you know, I had nothing. I literally had nothing. I didn't have a car for seven years in college and pharmacy school. I, I walk everywhere. I take buses. I mean, I live very frugally. Like there are a lot of things like financially that I had to learn. And that's why with my channel, I want to share all the struggle that I did so others can kind of learn from it and empower them to say, you can do it too. Perfect. That's awesome, man. And um, thank you all for those answers. And now we're kind of, we're going to go into Q and A. Uh, I have about six questions that I'm going to run through. So we have about 15 minutes. So the first question is going to be, you know, how can we start the mentoring experience? You know, how do we find them? How do we reach out to them? Um, yeah, how do, how do we find somebody to be a mentor? Sure, um, I can take this one and Jesus, feel free to chime in. So I think first is reflect on what are you looking for in a mentor? What do you need help with? Are you someone who is looking to get into a university or are you looking for an internship? Are you looking for a job or looking at, you know, what does a pharmacist do? What do the doctors do? What, you know, where are you at your career stage and what are you looking for? And I think once you finalize in terms of reflecting what your wants and what you're needing, I think that will help you to know oh, maybe I know, you know GMS has this program and can go look through the profiles that way and reach out to folks. Um, and LinkedIn is, like, I can't emphasize the power of social media. Um, LinkedIn is great for connecting people professionally, um, especially if you say you're a GMS scholar and trust me, other GMS scholar is willing to help and be there for you. Um, so really reach out, be, but be specific, be intentional, and see how you can get those, um, I say Instagram, there are many, uh, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all, really utilize the platforms that's available to you. You know, back in the day, I'm dating myself, Facebook was just starting now, like I didn't even, you know, Instagram was not even in life, and like LinkedIn, which is like a new thing, so I didn't have all these um, available to me really at fingertip on the mobile phone or on the desktop. You really have to go out there and engage people. Um, another great aspect is uh, if you're in school right now, you know, talk to your faculty, your professors. They can serve as great mentors. They've been there, done that. Um, so, and pretty much, and also out of the formal school setting, um, kind of the social structure. So at your church, at a local organizations, um, if you're involved in, you know, undergrad association that they bring in speakers and you really resonate and feel like that speaker talked to you and you feel like you have a connection there, reach out to that speaker and say, hey, I heard you at this XYZ meeting. I really want to learn more about you. So there are just so many different ways, but the biggest thing become, you know, starts with you. What are you looking for? Because mm -hmm. you can have various various different mentors in different stages of your life and what that would look like and personally too yeah. anything? Oh, that, that you covered it all <laughs> <laughs> so I, well okay well jesus i'll let you have this question then uh, how do you know when you're ready to actually start mentoring others you're ready now <laughs> <laughs> you were born you were born ready um somewhere out there there's someone who needs to know what you know whether you think that you don't know anything or you're just in the beginning of whatever process you're going through, you've already learned so much to get to where you are. Someone mm -hmm. else is looking to, to, someone else is out there looking for that. Um, whether they know it or not, um, you're ready. So if you find the opportunity, um, it's, you know, honestly, it's just, don't, don't look at it so formally. You don't have to look at it so formally, you know, just be, just network and build relationships and those things grow organically um you know yeah 
be around if if you if you want to it to be formally make it known go to go to like you know for instance if you're like a freshman in college go to your old high school and go to some of the um, teachers there and be like hey i am doing this here you know you can get a business card if, if you want it to be that formal and just be like hey i want to help kids get to college i this you know here hand these out or um uh, go to their like career nights at, at high schools there's there's certain there's certain avenues that even if you're like a freshman in high school you could probably mentor kids in, in middle school um so it you're you're definitely ready i don't you're always ready I love that and I, I echo it. You are ready. At each stage of your life, you look back, you probably be able to hand down one something that they may not know. And, uh, you know, in college, you may be going down to high school students or middle school, or if you're in middle school, there are things you can do in the neighbors to help each other. Like, I mean, I'm just saying like, right, like you really, even when you're in high school, you can impact other, like when I was a high school student, I went and did like tutoring for other students. And you know, in freshman year or in middle school, so you are ready. It's just maybe the relationship may not be as formalized as like mentor mentee, but if you're giving people insights and you share your experience and they learn and they grow as a leader, you're a mentor. Awesome. Okay, a few more questions. I want to make sure that we're respectful of everyone's time. So, guys, I'm going to get you out of here by six. So, next question. Um, how many mentors should you have? You know, is it helpful to have multiple needs met from different mentors? Short answer, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. There's, I don't think there's a right number. I think mm -hmm. um, you, you are open and you network and you share of yourself and things will grow organically. Yeah, and I, I would caution, try not to make it so qualitative in terms of like, or quali quantitative, like, oh, I need five mentors for being a pharmacist and three mentors to get into pharmacy school or get into university or get an internship. Don't put it that way. Um, think of it as a way to build relationship. Focus on the genuine human nature of, I'm going to be intentional and get to know Jesus for who he is, not I'm going to get to know Jesus so he can help me to get a job. Even though the purpose is the same, it's building relationship, but how you do it is very different and how you deliver that, the way that you build that relationship is also different versus I just really want to get to know Jesus and he seems like someone I can definitely learn from. Eventually things grow organically that he may help you get a job versus I'm going to go to Jesus and trying to get a job. And so it's the mindset and just how you come across um, and really, I, I cannot stress this enough, is be genuine. People can sniff through when you're being fake or just not genuine. Like, you know, your mentors are not stupid. They, they know, they've been through life, they've been through this journey, and they can sense when you're being authentic and genuine versus when you're just trying to get through the groove and just go, 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 and not building that relationship and be more transactional. So focus on the relationship. Awesome. Okay. So uh, you guys talked about, you know, the commonality that's shared between uh, Gates scholars. So how do you navigate, well, as underrepresented students, how do you navigate academic culture while maintaining your cultural identities and values? Academic culture, I think you mean like sec the secular society, you know, that oftentimes um, is all about friends and partying and especially if you're new to college um, or if you're a first generation you're going to see things that you've probably never seen before um so the looking back so i made some mistakes when i was in college uh, and looking back i th i'd say um hold on to i would say hold on to your, your family values um that got you where you are first and mm -hmm. whenever you feel uh, unsure or unsteady um talk to your family talk to who talk to whoever if you had a mentor if you're lucky enough to have a mentor in high school talk to your mentor um and where you focus uh this is my experience where you focus your time your free time is really going to influence um the decisions that you make when you're when you have your freedom in college uh, I'm, I'm assuming college um so um 
try to join if you if you have a lot of time at the university or college that you're at try to join organizations that are in line with some of the values that you grew up with um and if that's religious values if that's gaming if that's what i mean things that that you um valued in, in when you were growing up um those you can hold on to those values you can still you can kind of transition if you if you felt that the some of the things that you were doing were juvenile before and you don't really you're not really into that anymore um i would challenge that a little bit because um i i'd say transitioning from who you were in high school to who you're going to be for the rest of your life is a um, process and um if, if you feel unsteady and unsure to reach back to like the people and the things that you used to do um, and that can ground you. That's all I got. Yeah. And um, I'm a Vietnamese American. So value, you know, being a Vietnamese American is really important to me. And again, a lot of, a lot of my values are instilled in me by my parents. And I went to Austin, no friends, no friends, no family at all. And it was a whole you know, new world for me then. And I think what's important is that kind of what he's mentioning, you hold on to your, your family, your cultural values, um, make time to spend time with your family like even like when you're going out of uh, for me it was out of the city so it was about two hours so it's not bad at all but being intentional uh, really plan to you know come home and spending time with them you know when you're a freshman you are going to go home a lot more often than when you're a senior that's going to be real um and just being able to be be intentional like okay i'm going to work around things like this month on this weekend i'm going home to spend time because you know when you're around with your surround yourself with your families they remind you of you know your upbringing and where things are so that's one thing be intentional about making sure that you're, you're spending time and going home visit your folks even for a day even a few hours even for dinner whatever it is that you're able to spare um, the second thing is start when you go into college there are a lot of different organizations i mean there are probably way too many organizations too many choices right but really distill down to look at their mission look at their goals look at the numbers does it resonate with what you believe in and if it does that's probably the right organization for you and when you're a freshman you probably join a lot of different organizations that's fine you can actually what I call sit in to test out, right? Like you actually sit into several different meetings and just fill it out. Like, oh, do I gel with these individuals? Like from that standpoint. So you can actually test things out for your first year or first semester. And then when you actually click with one organization that again, going back to your, your culture, your values, you know, stick with them. And honestly, you don't have to be involved in everything that you're interested in be intentional and be involved in things that you're going to make a difference in the organization. So I make a few mistakes in college as well. I probably joined like 10 different organizations because I felt like, oh, I'm interested in everything. Like, this is so fun. And then I realized that you spread yourself so thin because guess what? You also have to make sure you, you get your cheap or keep your GPA up because there are certain GPA level that you need for your scholarship, right? So just make sure you focus your academic, but being able to spread yourself enough and not too thin because at that point you really haven't evaluate the process and like evaluate what that looks like. So I, I pretty much pared down to, I want to join women. I was interested in medicine and I didn't know what it was like being a physician or being a, a pharmacist. So I joined women medicine and it gives me a wide variety of kind of your past, um, a palate test, right? Like giving you different options. And so you can join a broader organizations like that just to help you. And they do a, a lot of different things for uh, cultural activities. Um, I know friends who joined, you know, more like Vietnamese American Association and things like that. So whatever resonate with you based on the organizations, join that, be a member, be active, be an officer, you know, make impactful thing. Don't just join to join, but join to build relationship by being a part of community member, being a part of officers, because that's how you really gonna build relationship. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And I will give out just this last question. Uh, you guys can just shoot out some, uh, some one-liners or just some examples, but as a mentee, how can I assure that the relationship isn't one-sided? That's a great question. Um, it's really difficult for, uh, for you as a mentee to know that you're fulfilling the mentor's goals. I, I, and I would hesitate for you to make sure that, uh, 
um, for you to check that box off per se. Um, what I would harken back to is what Anne said about being genuine and you really getting to know that person on the other side um, because oftentimes that's enough for the mentor to just get to know you and to see you succeed and that's enough oftentimes and I think you sharing of yourself and um, it lets kind of, it lets the mentor live a little bit through you which is a uh, a really, really wonderful part of mentoring, um, and uh, and just go from there. I think be as genuine as you can, and be as honest and open as as you feel safe and comfortable with, um, and, and that'll 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 be enough. I think um, you know don't. And I would say don't. Uh, I would say there's some things to stay away from, like don't miss appointments, don't um, you know be responsive and be respectful. Um, uh, I would say that there's definitely, there's some etiquette involved in mentoring, uh, especially uh, as a mentee. And especially if the person is much older, you know, sometimes the people are, who are very old school are, are very more, much more rigid in their, in their relationships. Um, so I would, I would just say that there's some don'ts, you know, and, and, like there's some definitely like be, have etiquette and, and be respectful. Um, but I wouldn't say it's your responsibility necessarily to make sure that the mentor is being fulfilled, if that makes sense. Yeah, and I think um, I'm trying to understand the question a little bit more, but if whoever writing this question, if you felt like you are the one who really take the reign on a lot of things, which you should be as a mentee, but you felt like your mentor is not responding or not being able to give you as much insights or feedback as you would want, then what I would do is just be transparent and honest. Like, hey, I you know, really talk to them one-on-one. Um, -on -one, and I think this is where in-person or like a face-to-face -face type of modality, like don't write them email. Like I feel like you're, I'm being one-sided mentee. Like, you know, do not write an email. Um, set up a conversation and said, hey, this is how I felt. Um, I, I just want to make sure I'm meeting up to your expectations and what are your expectations, right? So make sure, remember, mentorship is a two-way bridge, not one, two. So the mentor is going to get something out of it, like either through living through you or being able to know that they have helped you in, in one way or another and knowing that they have done something good because some other people have done that. And then as a mentee, you learn from their past, their mistakes, they give them, you know, guidance from that standpoint, so, or get guidance from them. Um, so just make sure it's a two-way bridge that this is an ongoing relationship and um, you're not feel like you're the only person doing all this, yet you have no output. And maybe if you continue and continue, you hit a wall where this mentor just doesn't reply to email or not reply to your text or your phone so just reevaluate like is this their preference just kind of always ask the five why like why are they not responding like you know from that standpoint and then check in with them what are your expectations what's the best way to communicate how often you want to communicate and let's set up a recurring meeting and if you do all that and they're still not being responsive to you then i think it's a good time to find a new mentor honestly so that means they're just not invested in you and they're not interested in you. And I think you don't have to spend that much time going after someone who doesn't seize the value to mentor you. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So I want to leave you all with a final thought. We did the poll uh, for the registration and 78% uh, of you guys, you know, said that you had had a mentor before. And out of that 78%, uh, the numbers broke down to about, uh, Almost half and half, 50% of you guys said the relationship was so-so, 45% -so. uh, of you guys said the relationship was very successful, and then uh, I think 5% of you all said uh, it was not successful at all. So I hope that this uh, webinar has given you some insight on how to go about continuing those good relationships, how to build those better relationships, and how to find a relationship uh, to start off with. So. I want to take this time to thank our panelists uh, for coming in and joining. Um, if there's any follow-up that anybody needs, feel free to shoot me an email. Uh, but other than that, guys, thank you for having us. And uh, be safe. Have an awesome, safe weekend. And uh, stay healthy, guys. Thank you so much. Thanks for the opportunity. Bye-bye. Bye. I do want to say if you have, um, if anybody reaches out or has further questions, please um, feel free to email me um, with yep. anything. And I, I'd be happy to. Uh, move
you know, continue chatting. Definitely. Likewise, um, I'll share my contact information and the best way to contact me is on my YouTube channel I and on LinkedIn. Those are the two most active forms that I use. And we're here, you guys, I know that you're probably sometimes afraid and scared, but you know what, just reach out. Um, oh, I saw someone, my I, YouTube channel is called Coaching Coins and Justin can probably send that out to the team. Yep, I'll um, send it out. Awesome, and yeah, just be sure to connect with someone. One thing, final thought about mentorship is that you are going to be the one that needing to take the active role, the, the driver role in the mentorship relationship. And you should be the one worrying more about what that will look like and be able to be invested um, than your mentor. So just make sure you do your due diligence. But in the end, everyone I've known so far wants to help you. Uh, so but don't be shy, don't be scared, because I was scared to go talk to a pharmacist. I'm like, oh my God, they like God, right? Like, really, they are the nicest people when you start talking to them in great ways. Awesome. All right. That is great. Uh, so see you guys later. See ya.